On that historical night of April 14, 1912, there were 2,228 passengers aboard the biggest sea vessel ever built, the Titanic. That night in the Atlantic Ocean waters of Newfoundland, disaster struck and 1,523 would die and only 705 survive. Now, 83 years later, only about a half dozen of those survivors are still alive. One of them is 84-year-old Eleanor Schumann, who has lived here in Elgin for 61 years. As a baby, she traveled with her mother and four-year-old brother, and both were survived as well. Eleanor's mother passed away at the age of 83, and her brother died in 1968. Often called the biggest story in modern-day history, Eleanor recounts the night. Well, it struck the iceberg at 11.40, and my brother was asleep in the bunk, and he was thrown on the floor, and then the, the ladies went out on the deck to see what was going on, and here was ice all over the deck, and they were kicking it around and having a good time, and, and an officer came down and says, everybody get back to your cabins. We'll be getting underway shortly. And so they came back in the cabin, and after that, the table steward came and rapped on the door. He said, get your coats on. He said, uh, get your coats on. The Titanic is sinking. Eleanor, who was born in St. Charles, is only one and a half years old at the time. So her recall of the night the Titanic sank comes from her mother, Alice Johnson, who carried her in her arms that night. Alice is just one week shy of her 27th birthday, and Eleanor's four-year-old brother, Harold, is also aboard the Titanic. They're returning to this country after visits to Finland and Sweden. They're traveling with two women from Sweden emigrating to the United States. One survives, and one doesn't. We got up on deck just about 2 o'clock, and there was a ring of uh, officers around the lifeboat, and one of them beckoned to Mom to come over, and so she went through the ring, and then she was standing on the edge of the boat and the Titanic, and she became frightened because it was such a height, and she said there was a space between the ship and the lifeboat. So the man in the lifeboat says, don't look down. Close your eyes and fall forward, and I'll help you. So he did, and... He helped her to a seat. And your four-year-old brother, how does he get to the lifeboat? Well, Mom looked to see if she'd followed, but she was still up on deck and the lifeboat was being lowered. So she called to her and told her to drop Harold. And she was so frightened she couldn't let go. So a man standing next to her took her Harold out of her arms and dropped him into the lifeboat. And they passed him back to Mom. And she took her life jacket off and put it on my brother because she said, I had you to care, care for and he might get through and tell what happened. And what happened to the lady that dropped Harold down? She went down with the ship. She was very fond of this girl. Her name was Ellen Broth. And she said she had the most pathetic expression on her face hanging onto the rail when they left the ship. And Mom couldn't get that out of her mind, that she had to die. How long were you in the water, do you recall? I think they said about five hours. Five hours, and, and describe the, uh, how you got picked up. We got picked up by the Carpathia. And I was, uh, my brother and I were raised up to the Carpathia in mailbags. And my mother had to climb a rope ladder. They were very kind to us on the Carpathia, because here we were, just coats on over nightwear. And I was barefooted, so they cut up blankets and made coats for us and booties for me and people came forward with all kinds of clothing and after hours in the lifeboat in the ice water mom's shoes were soaking and so they took them down below decks and put them near a heat vent and they returned to her and <laughs> the leather was so hard and the toes were turned up <laughs> she couldn't get them on her feet so they had to get her a pair of shoes when we got back to new york <clears throat> my mother was quite ill because she, after being exposed so much to all the ice water, she had laryngitis so bad she couldn't talk. So it was four days before she could, we were taken to St. Luke's Hospital, and uh, it was four days before she could communicate and tell where she was going. At first they wanted to send her back to Sweden because they thought she was emigrating. So then my father was notified in St. Charles, and he came to New York and took us back home. And again, Eleanor moved to Elgin in 1934, 61 years ago. That's a remarkable story for the Elgin lady who survived the Titanic.